Yeah, I have a mic. Okay, we're ready to go. Okay. Welcome, everybody. I think it's 7:30, so if you don't mind, we're going to stand for a flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In conformance with the Open Public Meetings Law, Public Law of 1975, Chapter 231, adequate notice of this meeting, setting forth the time, date, place, and purpose of the regular meeting, through notice posted on the Bolton Board and Municipal Building, mailed to all who had requested and paid for the same, and published in the Suburban Trends. Roll call. Mayor Saris, excused. Council President Riker? Here. Councilman Bay? Here. Councilman Barranco's excused. Councilman DeLine? Here. Councilman Giaconetta? Here. Councilman Venon? Here. With us this evening is our borough attorney, Joseph Ragno, and our borough administrator, Kevin Boyle. I just want to welcome everyone. As you can see, the mayor is away. Um, he is uh, in Florida um, on a well-deserved vacation. Uh, he sends his best to everybody. I, I very much appreciate you all send it, spending Valentine's Day with us. Um, a lot of you I see are wearing your red. I was chastised earlier today for not wearing mine, so I promised I would wear it this evening. Uh, we have some very special presentations tonight, and we're um, going to start with the um, appointment of special officers. Liz, would you do the resolution? Sure. Resolution 1869, approving appointment of class two special police officers. Can I get a motion to approve the resolution? Someone? Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next. Um, what I'd like to do at this time is we're going to ask uh, Jason Eckers to come up and we to Sean. And, and Jason, did you bring people with you? Who would like to stand with you? To the same, to the same, and to the government established, to the government established in the United States, the United States, and in this state, and in this state, under the authority of the people, under the authority of the people, and that I will faithfully, and I will faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly perform, and justly perform all the duties of the office, all the duties of the office of class two special officer, class two special officer, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. I have to, I have to 
Okay, we, we have a, other, good, uh, other good things this evening. We have another presentation. At this time, I'd like to call up Maria Kent, who is going to share some certificates and, and thank many of the volunteers who helped us with the uh, river cleanup. So um, is the microphone set up for Maria yes. there? Okay. Lauren, are you coming up with Maria? Yes? Okay. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm just on my little stick here. <laughs> Probably won't stay. Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, on the Maria, choice. before you start, let's. This is Maria Kent and Lauren Venon. So, please explain to them and the people oh, why, yes. why we've called you up. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. I'm I'm Maria Kent, and I am the Environmental Protection Committee chairwoman. And uh, this is. Lauren Brennan, I head the Trail Maintenance Group. Uh, we handle maintenance and clean up for the South End Trail System. So we collaborated together or schemed, whichever way you want to look at it, and we decided to hold a, a cleanup, an annual river cleanup uh, was 14 years. It's been under my uh, purview. And this year we decided to merge it with the Trail Maintenance Program because we have a lot of active uh, community, although they're all in Valentine's Day dinners tonight, I think. Cause um, we were going to do this earlier uh, because this event happened in, in November. So, but that's okay because everyone's going to get a certificate. But I just wanted to let you know what a, a, an amazing group of volunteers that we do have in Ponds and Lakes for these really important uh, recreational facilities. Uh, on a chilly Saturday morning, 30 volunteers ages from 8 through 65, along with Mayor Sarah, Councilman Frank Giaconetta, and Councilman Eric DeLine attended the townwide river cleanup and trail maintenance event. No one was afraid of getting dirty that morning. The Pompton Lakes High School Environmental Club and their teachers, Mr. John Tirano and Ms. Kim Tanella, the local Cub and Boy Scout troops, and interested residents from the borough, scoured the open space floodplains, parks, and recreational areas throughout the borough, and collected and properly removed over 40 bags of trash of recyclables, cans, bottles, plastic debris, construction debris, bricks, concrete blocks, and an old soggy couch found dumped in the river. The Ponton Lakes DPW was called the next day, and they disposed of all the contents the following Monday. We also uncovered a few silt-in catch basins and made them fully functional again and ready for rain. At the same time, another 15 volunteers blazed the newly created river walk trails and was painted by trail markings onto the trees. At the end of the event, the volunteers met and enjoyed pizza that was donated by Domino's Pizza in Ponson Lakes. All who attended received a beautifully designed t-shirt, yeah, t-shirt, sponsored by the Pompton Lakes Business Improvement District, the BID. A very special thank you to the Pompton Lakes Environmental Officer, Ed Merrill, Flood Advisory Board Chairperson, Lauren Venon, and Councilwoman Terry Riker, who worked very hard to make the event a huge, a huge, a huge success. And I also want to thank all those volunteers who took off that very cold morning, rainy and kind of crappy out and did a wonderful job. And I have to tell you, my personal experience here is that we were uh, cleaning out the uh, the, um, the storm drains down at by, by the uh, Joe Girlfield complex, and uh, Councilman um, Zaconetta decided to come, and he had a cast on his foot because he broke his foot earlier in the month, and that did not stop him. And he took that shovel and he cleaned out so much thick silt from the storm drains, and that's very important because not only does it make it look nicer and the road is usable, but now the storm drain will actually stop and help the flooding of the road. So this is a very important event, and, and Frank, thank you so much. He's dedicated. If that isn't dedicated, I don't know what, what is. Um, the trails are beautifully marked now. Maybe you want to mention the trails. <coughs> when we originally uh, blazed the trails two and a half years ago, um, they were done with the little metal tags that got hammered <coughs> into the trees. And over the years, we've discovered that might not have been the best course of action for trail marking. So all of our trails have now been reblazed with painted blazes. Uh, this eliminates some vandalism that we had going on. It's also better for the trees, and we're not losing blazes as trees grow anymore. So um, anyone who's down on the tra trails regularly or who hasn't been down since the summer, 
when you head back out, you'll see that it, it looks a little bit different now and hopefully it's a little clearer and easier to understand. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of the, um, because of the holiday, we don't have a lot of people here, but we do have a few that I would like, if we wish, Jeff, could, if you would help me. Um, I'd be happy to. Council President Riker hands out the certificates. And those people who are not here, they will be mailed or I'll hand, I'll hand it out to them at their house. We'll get it to them. Okay, so anybody who have participated in the trail and the river cleanup, can you come on up? And in honor of you being here, I brought my t-shirt. Oh, very good. Yes, thank you. <laughs> you can put it here. Because, uh, there you go. Oh, all right. There you go. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah, it's kids in every way. Had that clean up too. We have one for the Public Works Department. Terry, if I may. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it was brought up to my attention that the uh, biggest age was what, 70, Bill? <laughs> so, <laughs> this why he so, congrats. Thank you. Very good. And listen, thank you both to Lauren and to you, Maria, and all the volunteers. You're the true heart and, and soul of the community. Listen, I just helped a couple times. No big deal. You guys do whatever you have 14 years. Thank you. You're the true backbone of the volunteerism. You, this is what Pomplex is all about. So thank you. All right, and I appreciate it. Thank you. As we get ready to actually do the formal part of the meeting, um, I, I appreciate everyone who came out tonight. I know many people have better have better plans, but in keeping with them, um, Often being called the council caterer, I did bring chocolate. Ball. I did bring <laughs> chocolate for everybody. So maybe the girls want to come up and take that and pass around, and, and there'll be some left for the council. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you have to be specific about the number of their Okay. Um, I, I'd like to open the meeting for public comments. Can so I get a motion? So, uh, second. Second. Okay. Does anyone wish to come to speak to the uh, council? Just come up to the podium, please, and give your name and address for the record. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Ray Johnson uh, from 164 Whitney Ave. Um, over the last couple of years, the wooded area behind our home that's just upriver from Hirschfield Park has basically become uh, an ATV and minibike park uh, for some of the area children, uh, probably from ages 10 to 15 or so. Um, their efforts down there have resulted in a lot of damage. Uh, there's vandalism uh, with some graffiti sprayed on trees. Uh, there's live trees that have been chopped up with at, uh, hatchets. Uh, there have been logs that have been cut with chainsaws to make room for widening the pathways, large berms uh, for jumps and tricks and whatever else they do on ATVs. I personally witnessed and viewed and videotaped uh, six-wheel ATV vehicles 
driving up through the middle of the river, over and, and on top of the different islands that are in the river. And as far as I know, uh, motorized vehicles are not permitted on the parklands in this town. <clears throat> so uh, my wife and I, we've called a few times to the non-emergency number and alerted the police who repeatedly told us that if we really want to do anything about it, we have to press charges against these kids, which they're our neighborhood kids. We really don't want to press charges to them, but they don't believe us that this activity is illegal. So I, I emailed photos to council members back in September, I think it was the 14th, of some of the damage. Um, and one of the police officers did reach out and said that it would be investigated, but the activity still happens repeatedly. So we're coming to appeal to you. We bought our home in 99, and the big selling point was the, per the peace and serenity of the woods behind our home. Um, which is constantly being violated by an ATV park, which a lot of people in the town fought many years ago when an organization came in, came in to try to promote the idea of an ATV park for that part of the town. So I'm hoping that maybe there can be talk or discussion about posting signs or putting in barricades that block ATVs at the access points to uh, the park area so that can uh, not only um, make our life more pleasant where we live, but it can also remove the potential liability that the town might face if someone gets hurt on one of these ATVs. I've seen tracks going over the frozen pond when it was really cold a few weeks ago. God forbid a kid falls through the ice on an ATV. Who's going to be there to save them? Except for us, because we're going down there to try to tell them this is illegal. So I just wanted to make you aware and see if there's something that can be done to help all of us. Is there any signage down there? There is no signage. There is no, no signage. fishing. <laughs> no fishing. Okay. Um, what what I would like to do is, if I'm not mistaken, um, you, it's you. Um, Councilman Bag is is our liaison. Uh, I don't remember you coming to the council meetings prior to this. So no, it, so we we have different assignments and Councilwoman Bang is our liaison to the police department. And what I'm going to ask him to do is to reach out to the chief, explain that you came here with some of the details that you have attempted to reach out to um, different officers at different times and see if we can make some type of a concerted effort because it's not good for you and it's not good for the, it's not, it's not good for the kids. Okay. So um, thank you for bringing it to our no attention and, and, and let's see what we can do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is, is there anyone else from the public who wishes to speak? Or, or? Hi, Lauren Denon for Sunset Road. Um, just from council tonight on behalf of the Flood Advisory Board. Uh, for the past about a decade or so, we haven't pinned down the exact date. Um, Steve Grayberg has been one of the executive board members on the Flood Advisory Board. And starting this year is the first year in all the time I've been involved in the flood board that um, Steve is just a board member instead of an executive board member. He stepped down from the role of vice chair this year. And I just want to acknowledge to council and to the public how much Steve has contributed to guiding and leading the board over all of the years that he's been involved. He was vice chair to uh, Carl Padula as chairman when I got involved in 2010. He stepped into the role of chair when Carl departed from the board, and I became his vice chair. And over the past four years, five years, uh, we've alternated between chair and vice chair and really have always functioned as co-chairs with him being, Steve being a key part of guiding the board, we've dealt with some really challenging situations with the new flood maps, and Steve's guidance and Steve's steadiness and Steve's diplomacy has been a key part in all of the success that we've had. I don't think we'd have a Lake Restoration Committee if we didn't have Steve. We most certainly would not have a lake management plan that is being implemented and followed through. So I want to thank him. He's not here this evening, as it's Valentine's Day. Um, but I just wanted to take the opportunity, since we do have a few flood board members here tonight, to acknowledge and thank him and let council know um, just how much his involvement has, has guided the board over the years. He's still on the board. He's still a member, but uh, not on the executive board going forward. 
Thank you for your comments. Um, there were several years that I was flood advisory board liaison, and um, I've been with the pride group, I guess, for pretty much from the beginning. So Steve is a friend and a neighbor and a colleague, and and uh, he is one of those unsung heroes in Pompton Lakes. And you saw it at the beginning of this meeting, and it happens all the time from the day as how important our volunteers are to the community and how committed they are. So thank you for bringing it to our attention because he has been here on, on numerous occasions and um, he has done a tremendous amount of work for the community. So thank you for acknowledging that. Is there anyone else? Yes. You two can. <laughs> Gorky Cockapur, 26 Albert Street, Compton Lakes, New Jersey. Saturday I had the wonderful experience of going to our Pompton Lakes and Riverdale Youth Organization um, cheerleading competition. Our special needs group did fine. As a matter of fact, the whole, or, no, not auditorium, but gymnasium, the whole gym stood up and clapped for Russell and all the gang. And that made, made me and my mother feel really good. I really thank the town for supplying the needs of our youth in that very beautiful uh, by the, uh, what do you call it, uh, the theater, by the Rhino Theater, the, 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 the teen area. I thank the town for providing that for us, and our cheerleaders did very well, so you can brow brow Hopton Lakes. Thank you. Did, did anyone take any pictures that we might be able to use in, we, I on, a, some pictures. on a website yeah, or I'll, a calendar or something? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. That would be great if you would share them. Okay. Thank you. Oh, by the way, thank you. Oh, and the candy's for everybody. Yeah. Oh, 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 it came back. Did everybody get? Okay. Um, I, I think Ms. Kenton, Ms. Mrs. Kent, we have time for everybody, so just. Especially on Valentine's Day. She just wants to get closer to the candy. No, it's not. That's a point. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Um, Maria Kent, 17 Glencourt. I just want to reiterate what Mr. Johnson's, uh, Johnson said about the um, ATVs. We do have, way, way back when we were setting up the Willow Field <coughs> Complex, we, we came up and uh, we were buying open space. The, the ATVs were a real problem down in the south end. And um, we have, we created an ordinance under Ken Petrie. Bill, you probably, you probably remember that because we had the same kind of problem. We had graffiti on the trees and destruction of the of the area and the soils. And so there is an ordinance. It, I mean, I don't know why he would have to call and sign a complaint because we have an ordinance. That well, the should, the I'm reason thinking, you have to call and sign a complaint um, is because when you go to court, there has to be someone who can testify that they physically saw X doing Y. So even the police, under those circumstances, they, if they don't see it, they can't go testify about it. That, that's the reason people ultimately have to go to court uh, it, in order to get the violation. It's process. very hard to catch these guys. They're fa uh, I mean, they're on these fast bikes. You're absolutely um, right. But and that's we, the reason you have to do that. Okay. Well, it, I was. We were going to, and again, you know, uh, we recommended at the time we did put signage up, but the signage is very, in my opinion, it's, it's not user friendly. You don't know what it's saying. It's all, you know, legal stuff. It doesn't say, do not drive motorized bikes. It does not say that. It, it gives you the citation or the ordinance. So my, my thought, and that was, uh, was my recommendation to either put a big sign with a, you know, bike with a, you know, line through it, use one of these universal signs, and then if you want to put the citation, go ahead. We do have those signs down at the, um, uh, Joe Grill, the Willow Field complex, because the Willow Field was, would have been destroyed. We wouldn't have a soccer field after all those millions of dollars. Uh, we certainly don't want that. And what will happen is it'll just move to different parts of the of the community, which I certainly don't want anything to happen to that field. So my my point is, we do we did address it a long time ago. We do have an ordinance. Um, I'd like to see it enforced myself. And we were and I and we put cameras. And a big, a big sign that's with, with the, you know, the universal signs, no bikes, may help with that, my suggestion. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Hinton, you wanted to say something. <laughs> yes, Randy Hinton, 443 Montclair Avenue. Uh, just wanted an update on uh, the progress on Cablevision and Channel 77. Just waiting to come and call. 
last bit of cabinetry and we're ready to go. Okay, so it should be within a month or so? I, don't, I, I can't tell you. I talk to the gentleman who keeps the schedule is true. They already have other projects. This has been a, a four crew project, really. They had one crew bringing the five one crew to do that. It just takes time. Yeah, okay. Well, it's just a long update. Um, speaking as the vice chair of Shade Street Commission, I want to also support the Johnsons. And uh, it's ridiculous in that area. Um, especially if the kids are cutting trees and taking chainsaws down there. It is illegal to cut trees in a park. And uh, I want to just support them and Maria. That's an erosion problem down there. We know there's a flood zone. And uh, tire tracks and motorcycle tracks cutting up the, the soil and through the woods there, is a, it's a huge problem. And uh, I hope that we can do something about it in enforcing that ordinance. Unfortunately, they would have to see the kids using it, then call the police immediately to get the police down there so the police can sit. Um, unfortunately, we have to do that. Um, but uh, that is a very sensitive area, like Maria said, and uh, it needs to be addressed. Are, are those motorized vehicles covered by the helmet laws in terms of underage kids? I have no idea, but I you do know. know in terms of approaching it, perhaps from that perspective, well, well, we shouldn't have to because Maria is correct. We have an ordinance that makes it illegal to do this. The question is how do you enforce it when you're out in the woods? That that's the big issue is how can the police enforce it because the ordinance has been there a long time. Oh, I know that, but the ordinance. The, the, if they can't catch them riding, they can catch them without their helmets. So I didn't know if there was oh, another right. way. I didn't know if there was another way to skin this cat. Right. Yeah. Right. But we'll we'll put some ideas together. We'll we'll revisit the ordinance. Bill will talk to the chief. Uh, we'll bring it to their attention that the that even on Valentine's Day the meeting, the, the the room had a number of people that viewed this as a sure as sure. an important issue. Now I know that Councilman Jack and Councilman Bay are both retired police officers. But if we can get the both of them on 250 <laughs> dirt bikes to go chasing these kids, I think that that could possibly solve the problem. <laughs> Did it work, right? Did that work, so? <laughs> I'm a kind of, listen, I'm willing to do it. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm willing to do it. <laughs> but also, I want to thank uh, Councilman DeLine. We had our state treaty meeting. And unfortunately, Councilman Venon, our uh, liaison, was sick. And Councilman DeLine stepped in and uh, answered some questions we have. So just want to. Safe and shade tree. Uh, thank you. Thank you. For the vote. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. Anyone else want to address the council? Please come up. Shari Johnson, 164 Whitney Ave. I just wanted to mention that we did approach one of the police officers we came to town and um, we explained to them where they were riding these ATVs. And the officer at that time said, I didn't know that there was access for the police vehicles to get back there because at one point it was all blocked off down by the end of Hirschfield Park. But it has since been cleared. I don't know who did the clearing down there, but the police officers can now drive into that area if they had to. I know I used to be able to go down there to the old swimming area. Right. You can get into there now. They cleared out the front end of it. Um, and if you do drive in there, you'll see where the trails go. I mean, you have to kind of block off these different access points that are coming in from the different areas. But there is access for the police officers to get back there again. And they did say that they would try to pay attention to it a little bit more. And we gave a call, at least they could rush down there. Um, and I know that they've addressed some of the people on our street, physically driving on the street. So they have an idea where people are coming from. Mm -hmm. So. That might help. Yeah. Thank you. Can I just jump in? Of quick? course. Yeah. So probably about three years ago when we started formalizing the trails in the south end, um, ATVs, dirt bikes um, were a huge problem. And they continue to be there. Um, but one of the things that we found, and this is something that we should also consider maybe from a non-policing standpoint, is when we formalized the trails, we invited new people down there that normally wouldn't have known about the trails, wouldn't have walked around. And the presence of 
that kind of people sort of discourage a lot of the ATV activity. And when we were doing this, we had the uh, New York, New Jersey uh, Trails Conference come in. And that was one of the questions we asked, knowing that this was an issue. And, and they struggle with, it, you know, with that issue as well. So, and what we've had discussions at the Open Space Committee is sort of a long-term plan for Hirschfield Park, um, keeping that area in mind is sort of possibly an area to not overly improve, but certainly formalize the trails through that area, through the south end, and make it a little bit more, I guess, inviting, a little bit more well-known that you can walk through that area. And hopefully, you know, if we can do that, we can also might be able to have some success in discouraging that kind of activity back there as well, because they tend not to, you know, they tend, I've never, as much as I've been on the trails in the south end since we put up the trail markers and everything like that, I've never ran into anybody driving an ATV by me or anything like that. That's not to say it doesn't exist, um, but that might be another way that we can consider addressing that issue as well in the long term. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wants to address the mayor and council? Uh, seeing no one, can I have a motion to close the meeting? So moved. Second. Thank you. Okay. Approval. All, All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, approval of the minutes. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, regular me meeting minutes of January 24th, 2018. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, authorized bill, bills and claims. Uh, I need a motion to approve the bill list, please. So moved. Okay. We have we have bill. We have Frank. Second. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Present. Present. Opposed? Okay. Uh, we don't have any pre presentation of petitions. On the we're on to the consent agenda. Agenda. Is there anyone on the council who requires any consent agenda item to be pulled for separate actions? How about me? Uh, of course. Uh, I, I recommend yeah. pool number one and have a vote pulled over on number one. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, Liz, will, can we sure. do it that way then, please? Okay. Whereas the mayor and council of the borough of Compton Lake said to view the consent agenda consisting of various proposed resolutions. Whereas the mayor and council of the borough of Compton Lakes does desire to remove resolutions for individual actions from that agenda. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the following resolution on the consent agenda are hereby approved. Resolution 1867 through 1871, and we're going to pull resolution 1866. Uh, so, so we need a motion. I need a motion. Okay. I'll make a motion. Uh, so I need a second, please. Second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, now so you'll do this separate one, separate one action. motion, separate action. Resolution 1866, pursuant to NJSA 4820-A, approving the application of Lakeside Commons Urban Renewal LLC for long-term tax exemption. May I uh, <coughs> speak about this before you? Before I ask yes, the question. Yes, sure. Um, this is one of the two steps that you're going to be doing tonight that will ultimately approve the Lakeside Commons Urban Renewal Redevelopment Project. There are two things that occur tonight. One is this resolution, which uh, which provides for the long-term tax exemption, the pilot, uh, in which the borough uh, collects a substantial amount of the taxes, more than it would uh, if, it, if the property were being taxed as other properties are. The second one you'll come to will be when we do the ordinances, Ordinance 1807, and I'll, I'll discuss that with you then uh, to give you an idea what that is. But there are two final steps, and you're at the final steps for the approval of this redevelopment project. Okay. So the Lakeside Commons is the one that's commonly known as Salvation Army. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's that's what, that's the pilot we're we're looking for. Oh, that's today. Right. So do I need a oh, I need a motion? If you well, we have a discussion. Right okay. Uh, can I have a, a motion or resolution 1866, please? Motion. Second. Please. Second. Okay. Discussion. Um, it's actually not related to the resolution, but the ordinance that's coming up for first reading. But we don't do we don't do discussion in the first reading. I just want to bring it up as a general idea. When we have these come up, whether it's step one or step two, 
The ordinance that I'm referencing that's coming up for first reading references Exhibit A, the financial agreement. However, Exhibit A is not attached with the ordinance itself. And I think that would, I think it would behoove the council to know what the financial agreement is leading up to the introduction and the passing of the ordinance so we know what the agreed upon pilot is. Now, we're not just agreeing upon a pilot that there's some money involved, but, you know, we don't have that visibility. I agree with you. And in between the first and second reading of the ordinance, you will get, you actually have it. I have it. But you will get a copy of the financial agreement. Even if it's a general number in one of the preambles? You should have the whole financial agreement to review, and you will get the whole financial agreement to review. I do have a copy of the financial agreement with me. We'll make sure that everybody gets it. If you would like, you'll send it. I was going to say, if you would like to have my copy, I'd be more than happy to share it. But, yes, that's a good point because these financial agreements have, as you indicated, 95 percent boilerplate, but there are a couple of key provisions that everyone should be aware of before they're voting. Okay. Any other discussion on this? Nothing other than that the actual discussion will take place on the second reading. Well, you can discuss the resolution tonight. We have no cash exemption. Correct. But there will be a discussion on the second reading of the ordinance. Yes. So I need a motion. You have a motion. I have a motion. You need a roll call. Yes, I'm going to do the roll call. Okay. Councilman Giacometta. Yes. Councilman Riker. Tonight she probably shouldn't vote on this issue. Okay. Councilman Riker. No, she probably should not vote. Oh, she should not vote. Okay. I thought you said should. I'm sorry. Councilman Benn. Yes. Councilman Benn. Yes. Councilman Delon. Yes. Okay. Okay. We did our separate action. We're going to have, as referenced by Mr. Ragno, introduction of ordinances of first reading. That's Ordinance 1807, please. I'll read it to you. Ordinance will be presented for second reading and final adoption on February 28th. Ordinance 1807 and ordinance authorizing tax exemption and payment in lieu of taxes in connection with the redevelopment plan for part of Block 6200, Lot 1, and adopting and authorizing the execution of a financial agreement for payment in lieu of taxes with Lakeside Commons Urban Renewal LLC in accordance with NJSA 40A21. 20-20. The purpose of this ordinance is the first reading of the ordinance, which for this redevelopment project approves the pilot, the payment in lieu of taxes, and authorizes the mayor and the clerk to sign the financial agreement, which everyone will get a copy of before the second reading. The first reading is simply to get it moving forward. And ordinarily, frankly, we should have had it before tonight, but you'll be able to see it before there's a real vote on it. Okay. And, again, this is the property of the Salvation Army, the whole area next to the post office. This is – Corner of Colfax and Lakeside? Correct. This is – we've talked about this here on numerous occasions. Correct. As we've been going through the back and forth and the design and the layout, and they came many times before the redevelopment agency. And now, as Mr. Ragno indicated, now we're up to the legal part, meaning we're executing the pilot. Okay. Okay. So you need a roll call. Okay. Roll call, please. Thank you, Judge. This is 1807, correct? Correct. Correct. I don't know if we had a motion on this. I thought you did. No. Do you not have a motion on this one? I'm sorry. I need a motion on 1807, please. Frank, we need a second. Second. Okay. Okay. Roll call. Councilman Giacometta? Yes. Councilman Bennett? Yes. Councilman Day? Yes. Councilman Delon? Yes. Okay. Thank you. We also have another ordinance for first reading, and that's Ordinance 1808. An ordinance authorizing the mayor and borough clerk to execute tower lease agreement and repeater utilization agreement with North Jersey Radio Association pursuant to NJSA 48-1235. 
This this ordinance authorizes uh, the borough to to continue to utilize the uh, installation of the North Jersey Police Radio Tower, which is the one that's up on the hill. Uh, you've been doing this since before I got involved, and I've been involved since 1994. So it's been a long time. Ever yeah. since that uh, tower was up, that uh, they've uh, allowed Pompton Lakes to use it for police purposes. Well, yeah, it goes back to 1939. There you go, 1939. <laughs> I wasn't even born. Well, <laughs> Can I have a motion to approve ordinance number 1808, please? So moved. Second. Thank you. Okay. Um, any discussion on this? Uh, no discussion. I'm sorry. It's first reading. Roll call, please. Councilman Jeffinette. Yes. Councilman Vernon? Yes. Councilman Bragg? Yes. Councilman Delon? Yes. Okay, for second reading and final adoption, Ordinance 1806 has been advertised and posted on the Municipal Bulletin Board. An ordinance amending certain provisions of the Borough Zoning and Land Use Provisions of the Borough Code. Can I have a motion to open the uh, meeting for the public comments uh, limited to Ordinance Number 1806? So moved. Second, second. please. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Uh, does anyone in the public wish to address this ordinance? Okay. Seeing no one, can I have a motion to close the meeting on Ordinance 1806? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, can I have a motion to approve Ordinance 1806 for final adoption, please? So moved. Second, please. Thank you. Roll call list. Wait, you want to watch it? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't know if anybody has a discussion. No, no. it's fine. Okay. Yeah. There's no discussion. Oh, we had our discussion here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Roll call, please. Councilman Jacquinet. Yes. Councilman Vernon. Yes. Councilman Bay. Yes. Councilman Delight. Yes. Okay. Um, at this point, um, 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 make Mike Sarah normally does a mayor's report. He did leave something for me to do, and then I'll give you a little, uh, a few additional comments of my own. Um, but he has asked me to uh, get a motion to appoint the following members to the Open Space Committee. We have them listed. If I can have a motion, and then we'll, we can read the names so to the record. Second, please. Second. Okay. The names is listed. Or Mayor Mike Serra, Mayor's Alternate Councilman Eric DeLine, Environmental Officer Ed Merrill, Chair Planning Board Andy Silverstein, Chair Zoning Board Frank Russo, Recreation President Michael Barbera, Chair Environmental Protection Committee Maria Kent, Chair Flood Advisory Board Julie Donces, Chair Shade Tree Commission, and Tassinelli. Member First Voting District is an open position. Member Second Voting District Orlando Mundaka. Member third voting district is Mike Riga. Member fourth voting district, Tim Trost. Member fifth voting district, Lauren Venon. These terms will expire on December 13th. Uh, um, just, I'm sorry, December 31st, 2018. Uh, we already have a motion on the floor, correct? Okay. So, um, discussion and do I have any discussion on this? Where is District 1 again? This way, somebody that lives there may be watching this. District one. They could maybe want to watch you. Is where's that again? Uh, more or less right north of Hamburg Turnpike, Ramapo Avenue, Lincoln, the cross streets, um, up okay. to about Colfax. Colfax. Yeah. All right. Does that include Styles Court? No, that area? actually does include Styles Court. That District One actually carries over into into Styles Court. And I think Styles may be District Two. I was kind of looking at the voting district map the other day, and I thought I saw. Just to give everybody an idea, maybe if they're living there, if they want to be on the open space. Oh, so if they vote, okay, that's the best. Okay, so you use Liz's test. If they vote in the municipal building, building, then there is an open seat in the open space committee. So if you are a voter in that and the open space is of interest, you please bring it to the attention of the mayor or council members or people in Borough Hall. Okay, that's thank thank you, Liz. That's a very good way to do it. Okay, roll call, please. Well, it's all in favor, right? 
Do you want to roll call on this? Yeah. Oh, you can do it. You can do it. All in favor. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Aye. Okay. Um, a couple of additional uh, remarks that I wanted to share with you folks. Um, we've had some success um, recently in uh, renting space in the A&P Shopping Center. Um, we have two new tenants that are coming in. Um, the one I'm more familiar with is uh, Chilton, has rented 3,400 square feet. Uh, they are in the process of fitting it up. Um, they uh, plan on having it as a uh, um, starting approximately May 1st, where they hope to have two primary care physicians in there and a third to be added by the end of the year. Uh, they describe it as, as uh, ultimately full access, and I said, uh, open access, what does that mean? And they said they'll have try to have early morning hours, some evening hours, and Saturday. So um, that should be coming. And Mayor Sarah indicated that, in addition, we have a, a new food establishment coming on the on the other end uh, that specializes in fruit bowls. Uh, it's a, I, I don't know the name of the franchise. It's You're shaking your head. Sweetberry. Sweetberry? Yes. Okay. And so we're, we're very happy that uh, the shopping center continues to um, – uh, to draw tenants, and, and obviously everyone knows we're still trying, working very hard to, to get a supermarket in, in the AMP space. Um, in your packets, uh, you have a CTO Day, um, which is probably one of the uh, most fun days we have up here. It's when the high school students change, change roles with us. And they run their own council meeting. They have their own resolutions, their own ordinances. Liz and her staff work really, really hard getting them ready for this. So um, anyone watching or seeing this, uh, seeing this on the computer, mark your calendars, March 26, 7 p.m. in council chambers. It is a Monday evening. And uh, they will be uh, running the town for about a half hour. So um, it's really a fun night. So if you if you can set your calendars, try to try to come. Uh, this past weekend, uh, the bid had a, a, another successful bid buck sale. Um, I, we have a bid meeting tomorrow, where I assume they'll. You don't have the final tallies yet, right? No. Yeah, where they'll announce the um, the final tallies. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to bring to everyone's attention, um, Ben Stelzer, our longtime DPW um, supervisor, has retired. Uh, we have hired um, uh, a young um, DPW fellow who has come from other communities. His name is Dan O'Rourke. He uh, started um, uh, at the DPW on Monday. Uh, luckily, we didn't have any major snowstorms his first two days in town, and uh, we welcome him and just wanted people to know that um, we're, you know, we're looking forward to um, to working with him because we know that the the actions of the DPW are really critical to to the people in our in our community, and um, that's really all I have. So, uh, Councilman Delight. Um, thank you. Um, so this is going to be a very busy Thursday, um, uh, February 8th, actually. We had, um, we, the, as, as, you, as I think the council knows, um, we are getting free technical assistance from New Jersey DOT to develop a complete streets implementation plan for the borough. So the steering committee met um, that morning on the 8th. Um, Michael Baker International is the consultant. Um, we had participants from the Board of Education, the Police Department, um, Transactions, which is a transportation management agency, um, just to kind of discuss the, the plan itself, the work to be done, and the work that's already been done. Um, for those that don't know, Complete Streets is the idea of making um, streets a little bit more safe and um, usable for all ages and abilities. So not just that the streets are for vehicles, but they should be safe enough for people to feel comfortable walking on um, or walking on really across, um, bicycling on, um, 
you know, if, if somebody's older, the ability to cross safely. Um, if you're a child, the ability to walk to school safely. Um, so really, the idea behind the Complete Streets is to take a look at all of those things. And in a borough like Pompton Lakes, I felt, you know, I think we, we understand that it's, it's, you know, it's a very active borough. A lot of people walk, a lot of people bike. Um, and I'll discuss a little bit of the, of the survey going on right in a minute. Um, but it provides a great opportunity to really capitalize on what I think we have is great infrastructure, a great downtown that we're trying to improve even more. Um, but also do the, the small things that really make a, a community livable by making it walkable and making it safe. So the committee met. Um, it's, it's, it's an ongoing process. Um, they've done a survey, uh, about 12 questions. Um, that they, they were out at night, night, night out. They got about 35 paper responses. And then, um, actually, I think it was about 95 paper responses. Um, leading up to National Night Out last summer, and then they've had a bunch of paper responses since then. But what, some of the more interesting results of it is that, you know, when I say that we're a very active community, um, based on the survey responses um, at the time, which was November 11th of um, last year, 73% had, had responded that they walked or biked around Pompton Lakes at least three, a few times a week. So that's a, and they, they remarked it's a pretty high number. And actually they did a number, another assessment um, in February after another push of survey responses and the number had dropped down to 69 and a half, which again is a very high number um, for a community to have, you know, as many people walking around and bicycling, whether it's you know within the downtown, within their neighborhood, so it kind of speaks to the interest and the and the ability to really, um, you know, do some some interesting things through this plan. Um, so, you know, we've got the survey going on. If you want to participate, um, it's still going on. We have a, a web page on the municipal site. Uh, so go to pomptonlakes-nj.gov. Um, um, do a search for Complete Streets. The page will come up. There's ability to take a survey. We have what's known as a crowdsourcing map. So you can actually use the map if you've got ideas or issues that you know of that you want to, um, that you want to let us know about. Um, you have the ability to just basically drop a pinpoint on the map, populate it with some information saying, you know, I think that it's, you know, it feels unsafe crossing at this intersection or vehicles go way too fast here or I think we could use a bike path. Um, you know, in this particular location. So that's going on. The survey is still going to go on in no, another couple of weeks. Um, from there, um, they're going to identify, we've identified a number of study corridors, um, Lincoln Avenue, um, Hamburg Turnpike, Dawes Avenue. And what they're going to be doing is they're going to be taking, a, again, a fresh look at what these roadways are and how they can um, maybe be reconfigured um, potentially to, you know, provide a little bit more multimodal activity and also, um, They'll be looking at it from a programming standpoint. So there's programs out there like Safe Routes to School that makes infrastructure improvements that does um, that really encourages kids to walk and bike to school rather than have their parents drop them off in the morning or pick them up in the afternoon. Um, Safe Streets of Transit. There's a lot of programs that we can leverage from this plan to further encourage biking, to further encourage walking, and to make it safer to do so. So. That was that was that morning, and right from there, um, Kevin and I uh, had a meeting with New Jersey DEP. Um, as I discussed last month, and was brought up um, some issues. Um, we're trying to start a community garden, um, basically at the corner of um, Haroldson Drive and um, River Edge. River Edge Drive and and Haroldson Place. Um, Haroldson Place. Yeah, I always forget the uh, <laughs> the ends of them, but. Um, so that, that location is, is a great location. It's where we're going to be building the Morris Canal Greenway. Um, it, Stiles Park is nearby. It, it, it's a nice location near the river. It's very scenic. It's very flat. Um, but it's also in a floodway. And so what was brought up last time was the issue potentially re related to zero net fill, um, the design of the garden, things like that. So. Um, a, Kevin had reached out to a couple people that apparently he kn has known very well for a very long time from Green Acres, and they were gracious enough to take the trip up to Trenton to, um, you know, see the site, discuss with it, um, and, you know, so we discussed the, the design, what we wanted to do, um, the potential issues with the fill, and long story short, it was actually a very encouraging meeting. It wasn't like, oh, it says zero net fill and zero net fill. 
they're dealing with a number of issues where they've gone and acquired all these green acre sites for flood buyouts or for whatever reason, and communities like ours and other communities are looking and saying, how can we take this, and maybe some of it needs to be conservation, but maybe we can do something a little, um, make it a little bit more activity, not necessarily ball fields or, or high, high intensity uses, but something like a community garden or something like that. So this is not, we're not in an unusual situation um, compared to a number of other issues in the state. So, you know, being able to talk to them, I think they just want to be able to have the chance to review it, make sure there aren't any major issues. We talked about, you know, having, making sure that the water, you know, if, if we were ever unfortunate enough to have floodwaters come through there again, making sure that the floodwaters can flow freely through. I got it right the first time this time. But, you know, the, you know, the ability for the floodwaters to go through without being stopped by like board on board fencing or anything like that. So there was a lot of good discussion related to that, but ultimately, you know, they want to be able to review the plan. They want to, I think OEM, uh, state OEM needs to be able to review the plan. Um, Parks and Forestry needs to review the plan. So there's going to be a period of review related to the garden itself. But again, nothing I think that we heard was, well, we need to either drop this entirely or think about locating another spot, which would be extremely difficult. So, you know, fortunately, we're able to move forward. It might be a little bit slower on the approval side of things, but we are able to, to move forward with, with the planning. Um, of the community garden. So I, I thought that meeting was, was very worthwhile and, and good. Um, later that night, the Environmental Protection Committee met. Um, you know, one of the things that we, we were, t basically the committee's talking about um, the 2018 river cleanup. Um, you know, we didn't have a lot of people show up um, to receive their awards, but fortunately we, we always do get a great turnout for the river cleanups when we have them. You know, this year was very late in the year. We're talking more um, late September, early October this time around. Um, but, you know, it's funny because it's, it's in some ways it's getting harder and harder to do that job of the river cleanup because we're finding less and less garbage, which is good. Um, that's kind of what we want want to see. Um, you know, so we have to get, you know, we have to get very dirty. Um, but, you know, as Maria Kent said, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, been going on for 14 years. We got 30 people last time, even on a cold November day. So it's a, it's a great it's a great exercise. You know, Frank was there. Um, I encourage all the council people and anyone in the audience or anybody who's maybe watching it at a later date that have interest to to keep you know uh, keep up to date on what's going on because it, it really is a great activity um, that every little bit helps um, improve improve the town. And then right after that was the open space committee. Um, Long story short, the Open Space Committee made um, two motions um, to recommend to the council, which I think will be at the next council meeting, to recommend to the council to do an application to Passaic County Open Space, um, to um, request the, the remainder of the funding necessary to do the Morris Canal Greenway. Um, I think we've got the base amount funded basically, but we had a couple optional amounts um, that because of time and because of prices and things like that, we weren't quite able to fund. So we're hoping to fund the rest of that through this third round um, of funding requests. Um, the committee also uh, voted in favor of recommending to the council that we do a second application to Passaic County uh, Open Space um, for funds related to improving um, and moving ball fields at Willow Field Complex, Joe Girl Sports Complex. Um, currently, there are two T-ball fields closer to, um, probably, I think it's Walnut Street, um, which is a small stub street that has had a lot of houses taken down. It's not very accessible from the parking, um, other than a lot of people end up parking on, on Walnut Street. Um, so, and so as a result, the kids have to walk a decent ways away. So literally came, came the idea with a plan um, of moving those T-ball fields closer to the sports complex where the snack stands are, right. and then having what used to be a, a parking lot that's kind of gated off now, um, taking out the stone and reseeding it to build a second, another softball field. Um, so the committee's gone over that uh, for engineering, developed the concept plans, um, I think that's a project that's going to require a number of phases to fully fund, um, but the committee decided, well, why not get started this year? So 
um, you know, if the borough is ready to move forward with that, that public hearing, it's not, okay, I'm getting a no from Kevin. In any case, um, the, the, I think it was raised, I think, I think Mayor raised that, that we were going to do that as a second application at the committee, which is why we made the motion. So the, the problem you have is that that was advertised that way. Okay. Uh, the advertising well, you have to do the advertising. prior to the hearing. So that, that, we already did that. So, so we did. Well, the hearing's on the 28th, right? Yeah, well, okay, that's all we can do an application. I mean, that was, that was great. Okay, okay, then, I mean, it can wait till next year. We'll wait till next year. No, 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 that was a game plan, actually. That was news to me too, but we decided to do the motion. Kevin, st strategically, if we do, we do you think we do better anyhow? Just having one well, application you before them. Okay. So you're going to go through. That's one. Second okay. Is we haven't drawn down any money from the first almost twenty thousand dollars we received. So we're going to actually get a knock on that because we haven't even begun spending it yet. Doing any work right. on the new right. right. yeah. Two years later. So, so in the top of that, we haven't done any really engineering to really provide an application that we can work on relative to um, have the bit as well done at the, the, the I think it's March 16th. It's March 16th. Mm -hmm. We're running out of time now. So yeah. Okay. That, like I said, that was news to me, so we made the motion to do the recommendation, but it can wait till next year. Um, one just last note on the Environmental Protection Committee. Um, you know, that was the first committee I got started on ten over ten years ago now when I moved into town. And and you know, going back to the certificate of appreciation, we do um, you know, even though a lot of people didn't show up, it's it's really important to to recognize the volunteers that do go out there and um, you know, Lauren Bennon has really taken ownership of the Trails Maintenance Committee. We are always looking for more volunteers, uh, more members. Um, we are actually doing another trails maintenance day, I think scheduled this Saturday. Um, we'll see what the weather's like. Um, we tr typically do two in the winter, two in the spring, two in the summer, and two in the fall, um, just to you know keep the trails up to date. We've talked about doing little improvements to the trails. Um, we can talk about formalizing the trails up by Hirschville Park. Um, you know, in the near future, things like that. So, you know, if you're interested, get in touch with me. Um, we have, do have a lot of things going on. Um, and the last thing I wanted to bring up is the past couple, past couple Tuesdays, um, I've attended the, the Board of Education meeting. Um, you know, they run through the agenda, but this past meeting, I couldn't even get in the room because Lakeside Middle School was um, doing a presentation on some of the, the some of the, I guess, the, the curriculum that they've got going on related to technology and arts and things like that, and the intermix of the technology and art together. And, and I have to say, I mean, you know, we started the, the Technology and Innovation Committee two years ago, and, you know, it's, it's about, you know, it's been about adopting new technology and new processes. These kids are learning it as they're, as they're you know, coming of age, and the way that they, they interact with their teachers um, I think somebody had, re had remarked on on, on the um, on the board about you know how they just you know they can they feel so comfortable talking to adults in, in a large audience. And when I was that age, there was no way I was saying any words in front of <laughs> a, group of, a group of people. But it, it's interesting because the, what I've what I what I'm sensing is that the way that kids learn these days is more of a laboratory kind of thing where they're interacting with their teachers and one on one or group exercises and things like that. And it's just it's what they're able to do with technology. Um, it's, it's, I was just I was just floored by it. I'm, I'm sure Bill will have more to add on it because he was actually <coughs> but it was you know it's it's really great to see what the, our board of education is implementing and not just saying hey here's what we're required to do by the state so we're going to teach through the test or you know we're going to get through the day. These teachers are really pushing the kids and challenging the kids and the, cha the kids are really coming up and, and and doing some really interesting things as a result. And that finally concludes my report. Well, I'm, I'm very happy to hear you said that because um, um, I was one of the ones who tried to pu who pushed you to try to be the liaison for the Board of Ed because um, the Board of Ed meetings are, are 
quick, but they're very insightful. And frankly, I think the, the meetings I enjoyed the most were the ones where you had uh, the presentation of curriculum, because curriculum has just changed so much, and um, the implementation of the technology um, and the energy in the room when you have those presentations is really uh, infectious. So um, I'm ha I'm happy that you that well, you're well. that you're finding it interesting. And um, I did speak to uh, Dr. Amoroso this uh, this week, and and um, I assured him that some of the older members on the board still love them over there, but that that we wanted to expose them to some of our new younger council people. So thank you for your report. Um, next up is uh, Councilman Jackanetta. Thank you, uh, Acting Mayor. <laughs> Do that. I got the job, by the way. I just wanted to tell you. <laughs> and happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. Uh, I wore my red. Exactly. Brought my you chocolates. Too, <laughs> Everybody in the audience. Uh, real quick, I just wanted to uh, congratulate uh, specialist, uh, or I should say, uh, class two specialist uh, Eckers, Caritas, and Hennessy on their appointment. Uh, of course, P.J. Hennessy, like you said, 22 times already. But the other two gentlemen, I think they're going to do a great addition to the town. Looking forward to it. Uh, you know, long-time residents, uh, Jason Lightone, uh, long resident. Zana is assistant fire chief. So I think it's going to be a good addition. I'm happy to see that. Uh, congratulations to them. I want to congratulate everybody. Eric included uh, on the award or recognition. Again, like I said, the more you guys are doing it. I go out longer than me. I just, you know, Johnny out of spot, I came, you know, do my part. But you, you guys are the true you know, backbones and started it all those years, like I said, 10 years, who's 14 years, everything else, so a lot longer than I've done it, but thank you again uh, for everything you guys do. Uh, also wanted to uh, say I did get a chance to go to get the big bucks on Saturday, uh, and I didn't realize the line. I said, oh boy, I'm never going to get big bucks, I'm going to be out of stock here, but they had them. Uh, I, it was Art and the other woman that was in there. Joy. Yeah, Joy, right, so they were able, they had more than enough, so at least when I was done, the line was down, but it, it was a line. I swear they give a concha tickets away here for that. I couldn't believe it. First time I got them, I was quite amazed. You know, it was a uh, quite surprise. So again, thank you. I hope they do it again. I think it's wonderful. Uh, they they usually do it. I think at this stage they're doing it three times three a year. Times, three times. Okay, yeah. that was awesome. I know it's a new location, so. Yeah. But the good thing is, uh, as soon as I got it, I walked right around the corner, went right to the cardinal. I'll use it already. I was going to so say, I was right, right out of spot. I got a good use the, out of it. The, so. the only reason we keep announcing it is because we want to <laughs> remind people to use them. Don't yes. hoard them. I, use listen, them. They were great. So uh, thank you. Uh, last thing I had uh, attended the Pump Links uh, High School. It was on uh, February 8th, uh, Arts Night. Uh, and I know it was mostly geared towards the high school students. Uh, but like I said, speaking of what Eric was saying and that, they had the people cooking all the food. They cooked so much food. The vice principal was there cooking, had a chef hat on. All the teachers with the kids cooking. The desserts were out of this world, I tell you. I, I, I'm so happy I didn't eat because I tell you, by the time I was done, I was stuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was good, by the way. So, uh, But the art, I, you know, including my son, I said, really? He ain't no artist. But I couldn't believe what he drew and his classmates. And these are all different grades. The, the talent they had. Woodshop, what they did for that, and then they had a chorus going on, people singing, playing musical instruments. I'm like, wow, these kids! I tell you, what was this event? It was an arts night. Arts it was night. on uh, Pump Lakes High School. It was arts night. Okay. It was from seven to nine thirty. I have to tell you, it's only in the last few years they brought that back, but that's always been a great show. Oh, really? Show. Well, I tell you, it was unbelievable. And uh, fantastic. We're, we're probably one of the few uh, local high schools that still have shop classes. Yeah, and just the talent. I was like, "Wow, holy cow! You kids are this kind of pretty talented." Let me tell you something. So I was quite surprised. It, it took me back. You know, listen, I never thought. You know, when I went to all that stuff, I'd do wood shop or whatever. But these guys, what they do nowadays, and then the art, quite impressed. They did a nice job and, and brought everything together. Same night they had the wrestling tournament. I know they they won. It was a big tournament. Can't them, so we were cheering. That was a crazy night over there, but it was good. The good thing is when the wrestlers got all done, they all came out in eight. eight. So, but the good thing is I beat them there first. So. But anyway, but that's all I had. Just wanted to say thank you. That's all I had. Uh, uh, Councilman Bennett. Thank you. Uh, speaking of volunteers, so I've mentioned volunteers a few times over the last um, couple council meetings, and and volunteers do run this town from the sports to uh, trails to to river cleanups. Um, I was. Uh, fortunate to attend the Pompton Lakes Riverdale First Aid Squad in installation dinner a couple weekends, a couple Fridays ago, uh, with the mayor and Councilman Begg was there as a member. Um, 
these guys, I, I was I was an Ambulance Corps member years ago in Haleden, so I know what these guys do. It's, it's a lot of training. It's a, it's a, you know, huge dedication to, to get woken up at 2 in the morning in the middle of the night and then in the freezing cold and then go out, do a call, come back, try to sleep and get called out again or back-to-back -back calls in the middle of the night. It, it, it's a big commitment, but it's, it's definitely needed because, uh, you know, we run on volunteers, as, as I mentioned. So congratulations to all those that were uh, acknowledged that evening and uh, sworn in. Um, I also attended the Pompton Lakes uh, Prevention Coalition meeting. Uh, I build the, the liaison, but I attend mostly as both as a council person as well as a uh, parent of young children still. But anybody who, have, who has children, um, or, or you, you may not be affected directly, but with the op opioid um, uh, epidemic going on, it's, it's, it needs to be curtailed. And I'm starting to see new faces attend these meetings, and it's encouraging to see some folks coming in that I hadn't seen before to, to, to learn about to help prevent um, the spread. Uh, lastly, uh, the tech committee meeting, um, we met, I think it was last week, two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Uh, we discussed our goals for 2018. Among them are uh, streamlining the Channel 77 process to hopefully get it get it down, get it quicker uh, out there. Um, also to review uh, how our, our website usage, PomptonLakes-NJ.gov. We're going to review as far as what uh, features folks are using, what features folks are looking for, and maybe uh, move some things around based on that. Uh, I also attended the fourth grade play at Lincoln Elementary, speaking of uh, all the Board of Ed and, and uh, school curriculum. Um, our school system is, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. From what I've seen, um, my daughter's in fourth grade, my little one's in kindergarten, and they're doing stuff, you know, her teacher's posting um, what the kindergartners do, a little picture of, of, of the, how they interact with each other, little videos of what they're doing during the day. My older one's doing power, basically PowerPoint presentations. I didn't learn PowerPoint until I was well after college. And this fourth grader is coming home doing the Google version of it, but she's showing me her uh, the work that they do, and they do Skype with a scientist in Antarctica. I'm like, holy cow, it's, it's phenomenal to be able to chat in real time with someone who's literally a world away. But um, I do agree that our school system is very, very good. And that is my report. Thank you. Thank you. Last but not least, Councilman Vague. <laughs> I just, I just like to I piggyback on what Frank was saying about our special wants. Uh, actually, all of those gentlemen have, have some experience in, in police work. Uh, Mr. Records has uh, been in the Sheriff's Department. He's retired from there. He's been a special police officer in another town. Uh, actually started off way back when in Hale. Mr. Hennessy, as he said, has been here for 23 years, so it, there's a lot of experience there. And uh, Mr. Cressy is sort of a newest, and he, he's uh, got some experience in back down there also. I wish them well. I uh, received the uh, Prompton Lakes Police Department's report for the month of January 2018 from Chief Moses Augusto. There were 1,736 calls for service for the month of January. 368 motor vehicle stops, 127 motor vehicle summons is issued, 15 motor vehicle investigation, motor vehicle accident investigations, three DWI arrests, 26 uh, alarm conditions burglary, 15 on an alarm conditions fire, there were six fire calls, uh, 74 ambulance requests, uh, there were three burglaries, 11 thefts, Five domestic violence, no sexual assaults, and no aggravated assaults. <coughs> the Detective Bureau investigated 32 complaints, served 12 subpoenas, and served eight warrants. I attended the Ponder Lakes uh, Board of Education meeting on February 6th. The board approved the update job descriptions for technology in the technology department, depending on the positions of systems administrator, Technology Support Specialist and PC Support Specialist. It was reported that Amanda Pistolino uh, won the, won the uh, State County Calendar uh, 
contest when, in fact, she appears as the October person on the county handout, and it's a picture of the fall. Also, in regard to that, Caitlin Bennett, ex-daughter, had an honorable mention in the contest. Except her mother. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Head of dad. Proud dad here. And also attended the Board of Education meeting on February 13th. Mr. Branko, principal, and Mrs. Tannis, vice principal, and several teachers and students from the Lakeside Middle School presented highlights of the academic program at the school. Goals of the program are to highlight technology as a learning tool. Each student has his own computer. Using the technology to personalize the student's learning experience and characterize education. One of the tools to accomplish this is Google Classroom. And it's an application that they use where they can communicate with the teacher and with the other classroom members. They can actually review some of the other students' work. Each child uses their computer to do research on a project they have an interest in and develop it and bring the project to final conclusion. They then have to do a presentation to each, to their teacher in their class. I found the students presented presentations to be very knowledgeable in their projects and their articulation and their presentation to be really interesting. It's what Eric had said. When I was in school, I don't think we were as articulate in front of the class as they are. And they really were very sharp. The Lakeside PTA, through the fundraising, has raised $8,000 and proposed to the board that the money be used to install air conditioning in eight classrooms in the Lakeside school. The donation and proposal was accepted by the board. Randy, I stopped by the Golden Agers on the first of the month and had a little discussion with them. And as much of the community, they had questions about the Lakeside project, the fields that they want to put in the yard. And they're still looking for a food market at the plaza. Yeah, we're still looking to. So hopefully that will come to fruition soon. And that's my report. Thank you very much. Professional report? I have no report. Okay. I'd like to get a motion to open the meeting. I have no report. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, wait a second. I've got to take out my list. You've got a long list. Okay. You have a long list. Actually, I have a long list. The governing body received my report on Friday for tonight's meeting. You received Millennium Strategies, January 18th monthly update as some of the grants work as we begin 2018. One of them is the firefighters grant. We applied for $25,000 micro grant for firefighting equipment for the fire department, hopefully. It's not part of the bigger, larger grant pool. We might actually do very well with a micro grant. As you recall, Mary Torsiello has been discussing issues relative to middle and out of traffic enforcement. I provide the governing body a copy of a report from Captain Clark that details traffic enforcement from January 1st, 2017, up until the report was issued on January 28th, 2018. So the report is there. You have the minutes for the Morris Canal Greenway Project kickoff. After that meeting, we actually met in the field on February the 2nd, last Monday. The contractor was out in the field, engineers for H2M, Ed Merrill, and also Kathleen Caron, who is the representative of the open space for the county of Passaic, and they walked the whole project. Right now, the weather still has not been to our advantage. It's been cold, it's been rainy, so it's going to 
We're going to probably push back somewhat, but we are trying to get that moving as soon as possible. We received our annual annual franchise fee from Cablevision, now known as Old East, of $54,000. St. Kansas do a couple of road resurfacing projects, small ones here in town in 2018. We received the Comores fourth quarter update as to what they're doing in terms of their overall program working here in Pompton Lakes. I provide you with a copy of the 2017 capital budget list, which was what we had a capital budget based upon. You can see the check marks out of the 25 things listed. Almost everything has either been completed or underway in some way, shape, or form. So again, we've pretty much did our goals and objectives on the capital budget. You received a copy of our report from the Northeastern Region Education people, the guys who do our IT services here in the borough. One thing that is critical is that there was a letter from the Pompton Reformed Church asking a request for support of their grant for open space for preservation. So they counted for $58,000 to do some work on their doors. Remember last year we supported a grant to work on some of the problems in the cemetery. If the council has no issue, the mayor will draft a letter in support of that grant application. Yeah, no problem. Our support. I already talked about complete streets and the police department wants to report. Next Wednesday, the budget committee will meet to discuss the 2018 budget. I'm meeting with Chuck and Jim to go over some of the numbers based upon the evaluation and how it impacts the change in average house, how many dollars that means, how many tax dollars and all that kind of stuff. But that should be an interesting conversation. They'll be here on Wednesday at the finance committee at 530. Yeah, remember, it's 530, not 630 for the finance committee because this meeting is longer than our usual meetings. I hope not. I hope not. Well, you're bringing us in at 530. That's because Chuck wants to get in now. I was going to say, somebody was going to ask. Chuck's now semi-retired, so he wants to get in now soon. That's my report, Mayor. Okay, thank you very much. I just had a question. Chuck, on Broadway, remember we had the caps when the guys' contractors did it, they had to wait until the spring. Do you know if that's on the list that we had now? To finally finish that? Well, yeah, right now we're holding up the whole contract to pay the contractor because until that's complete, we're not finalizing the contract. Well, they've done the majority to come out and do the majority of the work and stuff to finish it off. Oh, okay, so they're finishing off. And Dave Epps is working with Ferraro and also with the contracting, actually the subcontractor of AJM is the one that's doing it. But that's still in the process of being done. Okay. And then they'll finally pay those damages. All right, yeah, glad to see that. Okay, thank you. On Broadway, there was the one resident with the issue with the driveway. I guess something needed. I believe that they were paving and they kept backing up and ended up cracking that driveway. Was that ever resolved by the? I think that was finally paid. That was finally paid. I dealt with her. I think that we get her name now. Last, our last name I think is Carpillo or something like that. But I don't mind that. You dealt with her. That was taken care of. Okay, that's what I was wondering. I know that was one of the projects over there. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Any other questions for the administrator? No, we're good. Thank you, Kevin. At this time, can I get a motion to open the meeting for public comments? So moved. Second. Thank you. Is there anyone in the public that would like to come up and speak to Mayor and Council? Please come up. Terry Johnson, 164 Whitney Avenue. I just wanted to address the discussion about the community garden. Uh, there is, I don't know how much research has been done about that, but there's an organization in Clifton that I had volunteered for for quite some time. It's called City Green, and they offer support and help. I think they even Yeah, they actually helped us get us going because oh, we did a grant application <laughs> to great. them last year, and we're planning on doing a second round. But, yeah, they've, they've been great because they provided us with some technical assistance, obviously, the fun. Yeah, thing, so thank they're you so wonderful. Yeah. No. yeah, and it's... Yeah. Is that the one by the parkway? You see by the parkway almost? Yeah. The high uh, tension well, I don't know if it's the parkway. It's off of 46. Oh, yeah, by the high tension wires? It's like going underneath or something like that? Mm -hmm. Or Valley Road? Um, I thought it was Grove Street. 
They're off Grove Street. They're off Grove Street. I don't know if there's a couple of them. That's right. Oh, well, you know what? They do have various locations in the different areas where they have gardens. But they're... Their home base is. Yeah, that'd be great if we can get that here. What yeah, you see like. by the overhead wires are the tree form. Oh, that's a tree form. All right. Mm -hmm. My mistake. Yeah. I hope we can get that here, so thank you. Yeah, and, and it's very interesting because many years ago I was on the Environmental Protection Committee here, and that specific location, myself and another committee member had put together a report to try and create a park, like a garden, not a community garden, but a park in that area. We, we uh, did a lot of research. We had a professional arborist come in, and so it's kind of nice to see that things are going on in town that um, fall in line with the things that we did years ago, or looked to do years ago, with the trails and the parks and stuff like that. So it's nice. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Is there anyone else who wants to address my other council? Randy? You're ready hitting 443 Montclair Avenue. Just a uh, question on uh, Resolution 1866, um, long-term tax exemption. What was the term? By 30 years. 30 years. Was there a reason why that wasn't written in there, or was? It's not in the title, but it's in the, it's in the exemption. It's in the pilot. It's in the pilot. Um, and will that whole financial agreement be available to the public? Absolutely. Once it's signed, it becomes a public document. Absolutely. Oh, after it's signed? Um, yeah, generally that would be the case. It's not a, an official document of the, of the borough yet, because first off, it needs a second reading, mm -hmm. and then it has to be signed by first by the uh, develop, redeveloper, because they haven't signed it yet. Right. And then when they do, then we sign it, then it becomes a public document. Then it's available. Yes. Okay. Um, if you want to see what one looks like, Liz should have, the clerk should have financial agreements for uh, two prior redevelopment right. projects. From mm -hmm. the Plum Law. Plum, plum, law. plum law. We should plum get Plum Law. Two, right. so that's so they're, they're available to see. Oh, okay. So I'm available at 4.30 on Friday. I can stop by and see you. Um, the complete streets plan that Eric was talking about, Mr. DeLine, excuse me, was talking about. Um, and uh, Mr. Boyle was also mentioning about uh, Willard, and uh, not Willard, on uh, Midland Avenue, and Millie Tosiol was talking about the traffic. Um, Councilman Jack and Anna, Councilman Bank may uh, recall from their careers. Um, Ackerman Avenue and Montclair Avenue run right in line. There's stop signs at Willard to continue across. There's been quite a few accidents at that intersection. And the residents have been asking for a four-way stop sign there through the years. And there really hasn't been one. I'm just asking you, uh, Councilman DeLine, when you're looking into the complete streets, if you can possibly look into that, check with the chief and check with the previous Yeah, history. I think, I mean, I don't think we need a complete streets plan. But to do to do that assessment and I, they're, they're limited in the number of corridors and they went off of the survey results of what people identified in Ackerman and Midland and um, they weren't identified but I think it's still a good idea for the police department to take a look at yeah. uh, are they all are they all borough roads those county roads at all not that bad no those are all borough roads it's all borough roads, roads. the police department yeah. can look into it it's going to be very difficult to get oh. excuse me the DOT requires five to ten years of, of evidence relative to approving a four-way stop. Um, so you have to really have a pretty high number of accidents, volume accidents to make that work. I'm just letting you know. Okay. It's just it's not that easy to do. DOT doesn't grant four-way stops too often. So the four-way stop by Lakeside is is not due to the high accident. It's due to the protecting the children then, right? I don't know what, 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 I don't know how they got home. I'm telling them normally, they require, you know, five to ten years look at relative accidents to make a four-way stop. Well, I, I'll uh, have the chief take a look at that. But my recollection would be intersection. I wouldn't consider it a high volume. There's not a high volume. Accident, accident location. There's been quite a few accidents through the I've been living there 22 years. And there's at least two, maybe three, which is not a high volume for 22 years. But... Um, 
it's like a speedway coming through there. Because as you know, the light on Willard, everybody races down Ackerman through Montclair to get to Broad Street because they avoid the light at Willard. So if it can just be looked into, I'd appreciate it. Just, just so we, just be careful what you ask for the DOT. I was working for Quantic on this park because people were complaining about speeding. The DOT said, no problem, taking all the stop signs out. So if you start where Mount Avenue as you go through a stop sign, they're gone because the DOT said, this is the best way to deal with it is to get rid of the stop signs. Because so just be careful what you ask for, you might not get to make Well, I was just asking if it could be looked into. <laughs> I'm thinking of old Lakeside Avenue. I grew up on Schuyler and walked to school my entire life. I don't remember many accidents there before Lakeside School was there and after. And uh, but so what the reasoning was why a four-way stop sign was put there. Actually, if I had my way, I'd put that at Ro Romaine. Oh, well. <laughs> That's the right way. We all would like our way. <laughs> we all would like our way sometimes. <laughs> all right, thank you very much. Have a nice thank day. You. Thank you. Does anyone else want to address the council? Okay, seeing them, can I have a motion to close the, close the meeting, please? Move. Second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Is, uh, do we have a privilege of the floor? Do we have a privilege of the floor this evening? No. Uh, can I get a, we have no executive sessions, correct? Can I get a motion no to adjourn? No. <laughs> Second. Second. Thank you, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. Have a good night. Thank you. Good job, Thank you.